world, it fills me with sorrow. For little children today are really going to suffer tomorrow. But who, who really cares? Who is willing to try to save a world that's destined to die? Save the children, save the babies, save all of the children. Help save the children with education. Of a gay mother. Sometimes as I travel throughout the nation, I can tell what an organization thinks of me by the person they choose to introduce. <laughs> I am pleased that you chose Sally, Vice President of CA. Give her a round of applause. And I can say to you, Sister Sally, that all the speaking I've done since 1883. <laughs> it's always good to be back in Columbus with the Columbus Education Association. <laughs> to the NDA directors and officers, to the CEA directors and officers, to my longtime friend and colleague in the struggle, Sister Dorothy Wilson, give her a round of applause. <laughs> sure, I hope you appreciate her. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. What Sally did not tell you is that most of you know who've heard me speak that I was born in Democritus, but I was raised in L.A. And that's Lower Alabama. <laughs> and when I was a child in Alabama, we had a phrase called Mela. Mela. Don't be like you know what you're doing if you don't. Don't be like you know what you're doing and where you're going if you don't. So don't be like And so, as I've seen all of you I cannot make like I'm not excited about this program. And I want to tell you one more thing. I've had two hips replaced, so you don't have to worry about whether I'm going to jump on a single table in this room today like Ron Clark. Give Ron another round of applause. He said, hey, that's when I was asked to come back to Columbus, I said to Dorothy Wilson, I immediately said yes. When I asked her what she wanted me to do, she talked about the education, dedicated, and recommitment. And I said, I am ready because I know what you're doing here. I know you're dedicated educators, and I know that you're dealing with educating our children. I know over and over again that you realize that with all of the rhetoric and all of the circumstances, that the struggle continues. We still must struggle and fight to educate our children to continue out. And so for a little while at this luncheon today, I want you to turn off your cell phones, forget about your email and your voicemail and iPods and PCs. I want you, in other words, to leave the information superhighway, and I want you to walk with me on the dirt road. I want you to walk with me on the dirt road by saying that. I want you to go back to basics. I want you to pause with all of the technology that we have and all of the things that are going on. We get less information now than we did when we had a party line. I said, I called your voice, man, didn't check the bar, and that phone was off in a dead space. So I thought you brought a little while to leave the information superhighway and walk with me on the dirt road when we talk about educating our children. When I look at public education and I look at the policy of public education, I can't help but wonder what would happen if our children were oil and our schools the Persian Gulf. I couldn't help but wonder what happened. If our children were paper and plastic, we'd go green for the children. But we recycle paper and plastic, and sometimes we throw away children. Oh, but I can say this to you. Children are not biodegradable. They will not go back to the earth. They will make a world wherever they are. If that world is violence and carnage, that will be their world. But if that world is education, what you're providing, that will be the world. Our children or the bald eagle, the gray wolf, the big horn ram, the humpback whale, and the snail dive. That our children would be considered endangered species and protected by federal statute. But we don't have that for our children. And so day in and day out, you must continue to go into these schools and educate these children. Because if you don't, no one else will. I look at American policy today when it deals with public education. And I find that the most consistent thing about that policy is that it is consistently inconsistent. 
America is willing to pay its athletes and movie stars and entertainers more money in one night than they're willing to pay the people who teach their children in a lifetime. Consistently in consistent. Oh, but if you don't go into these schools day in and day out, no one else will do it. So what are the problems? Yes, there are problems in education. But let me tell you, for me, there are two problems that I see. I know there are other academic problems. But one of the first problems I've always noticed is the problem of non-educators making educational decisions for non-educational purposes. Oh, I've got to say that again. Non-educators making educational decisions for non-educational purposes. That's a big problem. Oh, we have some problems and we'll fix those. What's the second problem? The second problem comes from posturing, pontificating, and picture-taking politicians. <laughs> That's uh, alliteration, isn't it, English teachers? <laughs> Let me just stop right here at CEA and say that the views expressed in this speech are the views of Thomas A. and Tom. <laughs> And not necessarily those of CEA or anybody affiliated there with them. They're not taking up our thing. Possibly pontificating and picture taking politicians. At every campaign, education is at the top of the gym in the rhetoric. I was in a town the other day and there was a dude running for a dog catcher. And his platform, I will catch every stray dog outside of every school, thereby improving the educational atmosphere in the school. He was the education dog catcher candidate. <laughs> day in and day out, you must continue to go into these schools because if you don't, no one else will. Yes, we have problems in public education. Yes, there are difficulties. But if the problems are going to be solved, it will be solved by educators. Education is the only area where everybody who ever passed the school has a solution to the problem. If NASA has a problem with rocket science, and it does, they take rocket scientists to fix the problem. Right. But with you, 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 they give you politicians, and they, they give you people who just become experts with their theories and theses and theses, bringing it all into the school. <laughs> Telling you how to teach, telling you how to administer. Yes, we have problems, but if these problems are going to be solved, they'll be solved by you. 